On this episode of the Warrior Woodshops, we're going to go boring below the surface. Stay tuned. Hey there, Warrior Woodshop fans. I'm Mr. Rodaway. Again, on this video, I've got our two hardworking front office secretaries, Robin Anderson and Ashley Schumacher. I want to thank them again for participating as guests. On this episode, we're going to talk about counter boring a screw. The advantage to counter boring is you can put a plug or a button to cover up the screw head. It doesn't make it completely disappear, but at least it makes it more sightly. And it's an awesome beginner way to reinforce with limited tools, limited workshop space. So let's get started. All right, so what we're here at the drill press, we're going to drill what's called a counter bore hole. And the point of a counter bore is this is Ashley's little boy. He's going to give us a hand here in a minute. What we're going to do with the counter bore is we're going to drill two holes one larger hole for the screw head, and one smaller hole for the pilot hole. The point of the larger hole is we're going to put a plug in it basically to hide it, so it's going to look decorative. All right, so I've already got it set up and I've got it marked out, so we just want to, and we use this fence system, so that way it keeps them in a straight line. We've got to set the depth. We don't want to do what you did on accident with the screw and go all the way through. Mm -hmm. So we want just the head of the bit going down. And the reason we're at the drill press is so it has an automatic stop. So Sully, can you pull it down just a little bit? A little more. We want basically the top of the bit to be even. So keep going. A little more. Keep going. Keep going. A little more right there. Now, Robin, can you come over here? Right there. And adjust. So when that hits that, it's going to stop automatically. So go ahead and adjust it down. There we go. You don't have to be exact. It just has to be kind of close. Now, if you, now try pushing down. It should stop automatically, okay. shouldn't it? See how that works? That's cool. You could do this with a regular drill if you don't have a drill press at home. Hmm. The trick is wrapping a piece of masking tape, but it's not going to stop automatically. Mm -hmm. It's just a visual. But that way, if you're a beginner at home, mm -hmm. they may not have this. Mm -hmm. Now, Sully, do you have your you got your safety glasses on? All right, let's put safety your safety glasses, glasses on. on. Okay. Mom will come over here and pull the switch out. Are right, you ready? Lift it up. Okay, go one more time. There you go. There we go. Bring it back up. Okay, shut it off. <laughs> wow. Fist bump. <laughs> nice job. All right, so there's all four holes. Now, we have to do what we did over there is drill a pilot hole. Isn't this just a giant drill? Basically, it is. And we couldn't just do it over at the workbench? What I found in all the years of teaching this project, a beginner, yes, you may not have the choice. But if you twist while you're drilling the hole, a lot of times these small bits will snap and get stuck in there. The, the advantage of the drill press is it goes perfectly straight up and down, so the students are less likely to break it. So if you have access to this, use it. If you don't, just be careful. All right, you ready to redo, to drill the second hole? Wait. You see in the center of the hole, this bit left a little dimple. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. So that shows us right where to put a little dimple uh -huh. in there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. All right. So go ahead. Ready? Uh -huh. All right, we're ready. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good. Let's do the same thing we did with the, the hand drill. Good job. Good. Right. Let's uh -huh. make sure we're bring it down close. Yeah. I did. Yep. Go ahead, so we throw it down. Keep going, you didn't go far enough. What we're doing is looking for that stop. There we are. Okay. Alright, let it up. We're good. So go ahead. Awesome. Let's head back to the workbench. Let's go. Alright, so we're back here to attach the other end of the of the toolbox here. So we're gonna glue the end on. Help you line that up. Uh, let me 
see where that is right there. And we'll find out what she likes better, the impact or the drill. There's and that one provides more resistance. <laughs> So, nice job. If there's any glue squeeze out, we want to get a wet rag. We did pretty good, a little bit right there. Um, screws are still showing. So, what we're going to do next is go over back to the drill press and we're going to put in a special cutter. It's called a plug cutter. So basically, we're going to plug up the holes. We plug in tools, we plug up holes. That's one of those <laughs> things that drive me crazy. I'm going to plug up the tool like no. You're going to plug it in. Teach your problems, right? <laughs> but you can make these out of the same scrap wood that we built the project out of. So, so what if we're not able to make our own? Fortunately, the hardware stores sell what's called buttons. The only thing you have to do on all of these is match up the size of the hole mm -hmm. with the size of the plug or the button that you're putting in. The advantage to the button is it hides any imperfections. Mm -hmm. All right, so to install a plug, it's literally just put a little drop of glue on top of the screw, you know, enough that it's gonna bite, and then you take a rubber mallet, a small hammer, so now you can get them to go in by hand, and just give a little bit of a tap. Now is it a particular type of wood? I mean, uh, glue? Just, as long as everything's unfinished, traditional wood glue. All right, you wanna give it a little try? Put a drop of glue in there. You can go ahead and do them all. You have five minutes once you put the glue in, so it doesn't. You have plenty of time. Yeah. And cue timer music. <laughs> that, in fact, that's what you want. You want them to be snug. And depending on how deep the first hole is, how far they're going to go in. It doesn't take much. Use a couple times. There we go. All right. All right. All right. Now that we've given, we're waiting on that side to dry. Since we did this side earlier, off camera, they're ready to be the next step. So we use what's called a flexible <laughs> saw. Okay. Because with a traditional hand saw, see how the blade can't get quite up against there. This one takes a little bit of practice, so normally if this wasn't a video project, I'd say try on a practice block because if you tilt too much this mm -hmm. way, you're going to leave all kinds of teeth marks. Yeah, so we want to get it as close as we can without actually scratching and just simply nudging that lot, not a lot of pressure. There we are. Now how, how do you think we're going to get that perfectly flat? That looks amazing. Sand it. Sand it off. That's our final step. Mm -hmm. You want to give it a try? Sure. And you can see the clamp adds a lot of, a lot easier when it's clamped. That is so much better than wow. the traditional saw that I know. <laughs> Where you have like, it's giant. Like, this is just so much more smooth and easy to do. Sounds like we got a beginner. Oh goodness. Did you leave some saw marks? Uh, well, maybe not. A lot of times the kids will get too close and they'll leave saw marks. Just take extra sand. It's a lot rougher than the first one. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> I like that tool. We did it. Yeah. You did it. So, all we gotta do is follow that up with some sandpaper. We'll wait on this end to dry. We'll repeat the process off camera, give it a final sanding, install the handle, and we've got a tool tote. But what about the plugs? I thought we were gonna make them disappear. We made the screws disappear. There's, with the natural characteristics of the wood, there's just, it's hard to completely make them go away. So you may have heard the phrase, if you can't beat them, join them. Mm -hmm. In woodworking, we have our version, if you can't hide them, highlight it. Mm -hmm. So what we've done on this practice block is we've actually used a darker material for the plug and it mm -hmm. kind of accents the hole. So wow. 
whatever works. The buttons, again, you're accenting them if you use the buttons. So. Yeah. I do like it highlighted. It, it does mm -hmm. make it look nice. I know. I like mm -hmm. that too. So we give this, the option to our students. They just have to let us know ahead of time. These are both our first semester, first year projects because it uses, we call them garage projects. It uses basic tools, basic joinery. So a lot of times the students, depending on the year and the time, they'll get the choice. We have both of these videos as a complete project. I know we only went over part of this one, but you check the rest of our videos on our YouTube channel. How to build this toolbox from start to end is there and how to build this little wall shelf from start to end. So, but it uses the same, same concepts of uh, the plug and screws. But here you can see we're highlighting yeah. would really make the shelf show off its, its natural characteristics. So I want to thank you ladies for being a guest on the on the channel. Yeah, no problem. It was really fun and I mean if we can help build something then surely anybody else can. <laughs> That's what we're trying to get not only help the kids show them how to do the project but realize mm -hmm. they're not just the only beginners out there. Again, yeah. thanks for now Check, check out the other videos on YouTube, on our channel. If you like the channel, make sure you hit subscribe, hit that little bell thingy, and go out and make some sawdust. <laughs>